Da. Can anyone actually hear me? Okay. I'm not seeing any indication of that. <clears throat> Sorry, this is uh this is the very first time I've used YouTube live. So this is new for me in many ways. Okay. This if you're not aware, is a contrabass sarusophone. It is in the key of E flat, or it's built in the key of E flat, and it's fingered much like a saxophone. So it's in some ways a, uh, a contrabass saxophone. The big difference is that it's primarily played with a double reed rather than a single reed. Although, You could actually use a modified uh, alto sax mouthpiece on it, but I'm not a sax player. I mean, I have played sax, but that's not what I do for a living. So I like the double read. And this is the very first day I've got to practice it. So this is going to be a whole bunch of very unexciting uh, practice. Things like long tones, scales, learning fingerings. But I guess I figured, why is, uh, why is live streaming only for video game speedruns? So I'll see how it works. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is just put on a drone. Uh, I don't think you're, gonna, you're not going to be able to hear the drone. Uh, that's why I have my headphones on. Uh, otherwise, I'd get feedback. Um and just try to play an in-tune scale, see how that works. Um, the reeds, I'm very much still trying to figure out. I have a couple of reeds to try. Uh, this is a actual sarusophone reed. Here, let me, real quick. So a sarusophone reed compared to a bassoon reed and a contrabassoon reed. Now you can see it's much longer, but it's not actually that much wider than a contrabassoon reed. Um, although the fav my favorite reed I've tried so far, this is a contraforte reed. It works quite well, fits perfectly, and it responds very nicely, but that's probably just because I'm used to it. Or, Sorry, I'm not used to playing contraforte, but it's more similar to a contrabassoon reed, which I'm very used to playing. Anyway, let's see what happens.
pinky key doesn't close all the way. Uh, and I guess I should be clear. Uh, I'm I'm playing this as a contrabassoonist. Um, there's a lot of pieces in the contrabassoon repertoire that are actually originally written for uh, contrabass sarusophone, and that's why I borrowed this. Um, so I'm going to be thinking of it as concert pitch, uh, which means it's it still uses saxophone fingerings, but offset by a minor third. So when I play this note, which on saxophone would be play would be a written C. I'm going to be thinking of it as an E flat. So when I as I play the scale, this E flat major scale, if I I would actually be using the saxophone fingerings for C major. That's a little bit flat. Uh, that could be the read, though. Okay. I need to make this drone louder somehow. The biggest challenge I'm having is ergonomically, I have no... This seems to thwart any attempt to, to hold it comfortably. Like... What I'd really like is a spike on the bottom, but it doesn't have one. Um, and it's not the right height to rest on the chair. So. Now the, the low register fingerings are a little bit different than saxophone. Uh, part of that's just because of how uh, the key works old or uh, more primitive. So here we have what on saxophone would be a G sharp key, but th which I'm going to be thinking of as the B natural key. Here we have the low E natural key or low C sharp key, if you're thinking about it in sax terms. And then here, this is not the low uh, low B key for saxophone. This is, or this isn't the low B flat key like you might think it would be coming from saxophone. But this is the low B natural key or concert D. The it does have a low B flat key, but that's actually over here for the thumb. You can see it closes this key up here. All right. And that's as low as it plays. Uh, so it can't play the lowest three notes that the contra can. Um, it only goes down to low concert D flat. And the high range, I honestly have no idea. Uh, I'm still, um, it's not like the saxophone. It doesn't have uh, sax palm keys. Like on saxophone, you would have a, a D key, uh, an E flat key, an E key over here, and then a high F key. Uh, but it has none of that. So for saxophone, you actually use the third harmonics, just like you would on a bassoon or oboe. But... I have no idea what the what vents to use. Um, let's just play a play up to the upper E. Now I should or the upper E flat, so a two octave scale. I'm still trying to figure out how to play the the um, the octave F. So I can play low F just fine, and it has a special key which kind of works like a half hole on bassoon in order to, to serve as a harmonic vent for that low F, but it doesn't work very well. It's 
kind of like if, if you play bassoon and you don't use enough half hole and you can feel it where it's right on the edge of those two different harmonics, that sound. Um, but the, uh, the register above that works okay. And it has uh, two octave keys, a lot like contrabassoon. Or um, if uh, really old saxophones had this had the same system, uh, the two octave keys were independent. It was only later that they developed on the saxophone the uh, automatic octave mechanism. So let me double check this fingering chart here and see where it tells me to switch. It doesn't. Okay, there it is. Huh. So it says to not to switch to this octave key until you get to um, the A at the top of the staff. And then for everything below that, the uh, A flat, G, F sharp, and F to use this thumb octave vent. So let's try that. Let me get my tuner out. Hmm. Pulling that A out a little sharp. And then it says to switch to the upper octave key on C. So I'll try that. That's something I'm going to have to look at on the reeds. The uh, the upper octave is pulling sharp. I'm going to try this reed for a second. This is actually a Keith Lorraine custom sarusophone reed. Brett Newton let me borrow that. Well, the um, uh, Korok, the the thing about automatic, uh, the reason the automatic octave mechanism works so well on the saxophone is because you don't use any, well, for a general playing, you don't use third harmonics. Um, uh, there's, of course, altissimo fingerings, but, you know, your basic day-to-day -day saxophone fingering, you use second harmonics all the way up to that top F. Uh, automatic or uh, Independent octave keys like this are actually really good for third, fourth, fifth harmonics uh, because you can directly choose which vent to use. Am I allergic to eggs? I, no, I don't think so. I don't know. Okay, it's complete non sequitur. Okay, so uh, let's just try a two octave scale. And I'll try to switch the octave keys at the right time. Yeah, I need to add a little bit of a little bit of cork here to thicken this. If you can see, when I press this key, it doesn't quite close all the way, so it's leaking a little bit on that low, uh, the low E flat. Uh... 
my first goal with reeds i have a couple of blanks uh drawing right now but my goal with reeds is to try to bring those registers closer together so right now the low register is flat compared to the top register um and let me try the actual cerusophone reed I don't like this read it mu that much. It's very thin, so it kind of feels like playing a, a, a too small read. But maybe the uh, maybe the registers are more in tune with one another. So I'm going to try the octave B or the two B flats. <laughs> But luckily, on double reads, um, you have a lot of flexibility to adjust that. You know, 20 cents on a double read is something you can adjust for. 20 cents on a single read is a lot more difficult. Okay. So let's let's see what fingerings they list for high F. Okay. Uh, Calo, I'm going to answer that in chat so that it stays on there. Uh, I borrowed it uh, or rented it from a colleague who works um, uh, teaches at a university in uh, Texas. So yesterday I drove to Lubbock to pick it up. Uh, but uh, I've always I've always wanted to try one. Um, so I have a performance of uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice coming up, and it was originally that piece was originally written for contrabass rusophone. The score actually says contrabass rusophone or contrabassoon. Uh, and I've always wanted to wanted to try it on the original instrument. So hopefully over the next month, I can get this to the point where I feel comfortable playing it in an orchestra. Um, okay. So D, upper D. Hmm. <laughs> Resistant, uh, or it still wants to multiphonic on me. I, there we go, much better. Okay. I mean, they, they had pictures of people. This was designed, supposedly designed to be able to march with it, but I can barely sit with it comfortably.
Let me see if that works better. I haven't quite cleared this with the conductor yet, so I'm going to be a little secretive on where exactly that performance is. I hope you understand. sharp or E natural wasn't working for me. Well, yeah, I say that. Yeah, everything's so sharp up there. Okay. Well, until I get that, uh, get the upper register, until I get a reed that can play the upper register in tune, I don't know how useful it is for me to learn a whole bunch of uh, uh, fingering, uh, upper register fingerings, and then possibly have to unlearn them. Uh, let's, I'm actually, I'm going to turn on a metronome and just play some slow scales in the middle register, try to get comfortable with these uh, transitions with the octave keys because they're in different places than I'm used to uh, for contrabassoon. Um, like I said, this is not going to be the world's most exciting video. Uh, if you came to listen to me play a whole bunch of impressive excerpts on Sarusophone, you're going to be very, very disappointed, I'm sad to say. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Let's switch to Here's an awkward transition from uh, from uh, A flat to A natural. You're transitioning from the thumb octave key 
to the lower octave key here. And that that transition is something new. a lot more comfortable on the the interval between the registers i might not, i might just i might be doing something i'm used to having to do on contrabassoon uh but don't have to do on sarusophone so maybe i was over complicating that and um you know anytime you you're picking up a new instrument that has different intonation tendencies um there's a it's a very easy habit to do things that were natural on one instrument on the other. So I, like I remember when I first got this contrabassoon, I was having the worst time with a uh, low F. Low F was really sharp, or sorry, really flat. And I did, I, it took me a while to realize I was doing too much. I had been playing on a uh, different instrument that had a really sharp low F so long that I was compensating for that. And on this instrument, I didn't have to do that anymore. Okay, so uh, let's, I'm going to switch my drone to an F, which means if you're thinking about this in saxophone terms, I'm, uh, it would be a D. intonation on the octaves. Yeah, yeah, that that F if I if I firm up enough to where it feels like it's comfortable, like like it's not gonna drop down the octave, it goes sharp. very very sensitive the upper b flat sorry i i, I know this must look crazy I'm still trying to get comfortable with this Hold on a second, actually. Let me.
You know, uh, what what Brett Newton suggested um, was to get one of those tuba stands. You know, they have those stands that tuba players sometimes use. You, you kind of put it in front of you in between your legs and it has an adjustable height. I really think that's going to be a good idea. Is using the wrong octave key. Of course, there's only three octave keys. Yeah, uh, Jan Goro, I'm really looking forward to, uh, once I get better at this, um, kind of uh, recording some passages on sarusophone and then contrabassoon to kind of really uh, see what they w work like in combination or an alteration. when you try to half hold on a <laughs> sarusophone. Um, I tried to play the uh, uh, the one, two, three, one, two, three fingering up the octave by just lifting up this first finger, which is how you would do it on contrabassoon. Definitely doesn't work on sarusophone. I mean, I knew it wouldn't work, but uh, just it was an accident, but slow down because I, I want to I want to be uh, I want to be careful about uh, one bad ha one habit it's easy to fall into when you're learning a new instrument is trying to go too fast uh, and then you end up kind of sloppy so in this upper register if I were to try to breeze through this too fast, there's a very good chance I'd be end up being very sloppy with which octave key I'm using. So. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
just a half hole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Brent Newton, who just posted in chat, when I was on my way back to, from picking this up, I dropped by his place and uh, we got to play a little bit of uh, Sarusaphone. He showed me a few uh, tips and tricks because unlike me, he actually has played Sarusaphone seriously in the past. Okay. So let's. I, I've had a drone on F going. Let's switch to F sharp and try to get a little more comfortable with some of the uh, uh, chromatic fingerings. <laughs> my webcam down a little bit. It's probably more interesting for you all to see some more fingerings than uh, the bell. <clears throat> Uh, John, there's actually a, an instrument that's even more like an unholy combination of a, a bassoon and an ophicleide. That's called a reed contrabass, and I've never got to play one of those, uh, but I've heard they're, uh, they're a lot of fun. Believe it or not, they're supposed to be even louder than sarusophone. the uh, one of Chris King's uh, contraforte reads. Uh, and it's probably just because I'm a contrabassoonist, but it does feel pretty darn comfortable to me. I did uh, I did use the uh, the uh, Keith Lorraine read that uh, you let me borrow a little bit as well. Yeah, Brett, I was just talking to them uh, before you got in that I think I am going to try a tuba stand like you were talking about, because this is not ergonomic at all. Yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, now, Brett, when you when you did this, did you have any uh, uh, on your sarusophone? Um. How, are, how is the intonation between the octaves? Because especially uh, like on the on the left hand notes, the the octaves are pretty wide for me. I mean, I can bring it down, but did you ever run into that?
So as far as fingering is concerned, I played enough saxophone in in the past that the um, that the, the fingerings feel pretty comfortable. Uh, it's just rethinking of them in concert pitch because all of the music I'm going to be playing is going to be in concert pitch. So, you know, like when I uh, play this note, I'm I'm still kind of thinking about it as um, uh, B flat. But of course, when I'm reading the music, it's going to be C sharp. So trying to rethink of this as a C sharp key instead of a, um, a B flat key is going to be a challenge. I guess I could rewrite all my music in finale, but I, I don't want to do that. I think it'll be worth it in the long run to get used to reading concert pitch. key switch that I'm not used to yet. Okay, what what which of those keys is sticking? Okay. Yeah, it's this one. Okay. Yeah, there's a pad here. It's sticking a little bit. Let's see if I can. Uh, first finger right hand, that pad. Uh. Yeah, uh, the the transposition trick that you're talking that, that Brett's talking about uh, is probably what I'm going to be doing kind of subconsciously, um, but I am going to do my best to try to think about it in concert pitch. Um, just once again, I'm going to be playing bassoon parts, not saxophone parts, so I think that I think that that'll personally be easier for me in the long term. And if I'm going to, right now would be the time to learn to really internalize that process rather than waiting for it to, after I've already learned, done it a little bit. Well, they're not, they're not entirely dissimilar. Um, the two backs, like the sarusophone, is a metal bodied instrument with saxophone fingerings, but with a narrower bore. Um, so like the sarusophone has a much narrower taper than a, um, than a contrabass saxophone would. And, um, but um, the sarusophone was a, um, is kind of halfway between the bassoon and saxophone families, at least, overall, whereas the two backs is almost, is entirely a saxophone. Okay. Switch to uh, G, drone. The contraforte read is just a tiny bit, or that particular one's just a tiny bit sharp. Tiny, tiny bit, like five cents, which I'm kind if I were joking, I would say in the double read world, five cents is considered in tune. 
I'm not joking as much as I wish I was, though. Yes, this is a contrabass sarusophone. Oh, no. Yeah, I still like this read. Uh, Blue Lion, I don't even have this one. Uh, this is, I, uh, I rented this for the month from uh, Richard Meek, who teaches at uh, uh, Texas Tech. Uh, the blue one is the read we tried yesterday. The, uh, the purple and the green ones we didn't try yesterday, but they're, they're all Contra Forte reads. I'm interested, I, here. I have a couple of blanks that are drawing right now. I I use I don't have a I haven't shaped any sarusophone cane yet. So, but I did uh, I did buy some contraforte cane, and I did I kept one of them as a uh, contrabassoon. I sorry I kept one of them uh, contraforte dimensions, and I modified one to uh, sarusophone dimensions as listed in the the Baines Woodwind Bible, uh, Woodwind Instruments in Their History. So I'm curious to see which of those two sounds better. Yeah, yeah, uh, I was actually there at uh, Texas Tech yesterday. Um, so it was, a, it was a nice campus. I If you were in the marching band, I heard some of your set. This is really more of me practicing and other people listening for reasons I don't understand. Um, but if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, I don't know what happened there. No, he definitely didn't follow the Bane's measurements. The Bane measurements are gigantic. Um, all right. Yeah. But it still, it still works. In my opinion, the, the reed Keith Lorraine made still works better than the, uh, the Van Doren Sarusophone reeds. Um, or at least the, the two that I've tried. Yeah, see, I think they need a little bit extra length uh, in order to be in tune. Um, because it's, it's, The Sarus phones are sorry, the subcontrabassoons going well, still slowly, you know, got to balance uh, making enough money to stay, keep a roof over my head with having a little bit of extra time to work on the subcontrabassoon. But it, it's definitely something I'm, I'm working at least a little bit on every day. Uh, as far as uh, Jacob asked, what cleft does it read? Um, it actually very much depends on how you think about it. Uh, 
technically, uh, on the one hand, you could think of the uh, Sarus, contrabass Sarus phone as essentially being contrabass saxophone. It has saxophone fingerings, and you could read saxophone music with it. In that case, this would be a low C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Uh, but since I'm a contrabassoonist, I'm going to be thinking about it in concert pitch because I'm going to be reading uh, concert pitch music. So I'll be thinking E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, uh, C, D, E flat. Brett, did you use any resonance uh, fingerings for that uh, open C sharp or open E natural? C sharp uh, has the same problem as the D. It's just very right on the edge of two different harmonics. And I think I figured out why this uh, vent is in a, a bad place. We were talking about how it didn't really work very well for the, the F. I was thinking this vent, this thumb vent, was just for the F. But apparently, according to the, the fingering chart that you let me borrow, it is... Um, or it says to use it for the um, F sharp, G, and A flat as well. And it, and it works great on the F and the E. So maybe, maybe it's a lot like contrabassoon in that it just does not have 100% effective octave keys. Yeah, I play, I have played bass clarinet before, but my my job now doesn't involve really a lot of doubling just bassoon and contra bassoon so it's been a long time since i've played any any low clarinet i do have i still have a whole box of alto clarinet reads though from one semester i was playing alto bass and contra in a um university ensemble hmm. I think like I think uh, like saxophone. Uh, what Brett was suggesting was to try the uh, the low C sharp and then lift up the first finger. Um, uh, but I think the the tone holes are too large on a, on like a bassoon or an oboe family instrument. The tone holes are small enough that they can function as uh, harmonic vents. But saxophone and apparently sarusophone that doesn't work quite as easily. I would, I love the octo contrabass clarinet. I would love to play one if more than one actually existed. Okay. Let's see if I can get a little bit of sight reading. I'm going to open up my... I played a loopophone at IDRS. It is a blast to play. I love that thing. Uh, I haven't played a lot of bass oboe. Uh, there's like a 30 second YouTube video of me playing bass oboe, and that's almost the entirety of bass oboe playing I've done. But uh, I did 
I did enjoy the Lupophone. That the low F on Lupophone is uh, something something we should all experience playing. Okay, where's yeah, some good old Bisonborn. Yeah, that's a shame. They should they should at least commission a uh, like I understand that those particular instruments are historic, but they should at least commission a uh, someone to duplicate them because they really do need to be played. I mean, I I have my own reasons. Like I I don't I don't think the clarinet family is the best family for 32 foot range instruments uh, because the the overtone series isn't uh, complete. Uh, well, as a bassoonist, I don't feel that they're complete. A clarinet player might argue that I have too many overtones. Uh, but um, but w when you're missing the octave harmonics, it can make it really hard to 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 uh, to kind of lock your ears into those really low pitches, um, which is one of the reasons why I'm hopeful that the subcontrabassoon will be a better overall subcontrabass instrument than the octo contra clarinets were. Okay, let's just, I'm going to just do a little bit of sight reading, see how this goes. Probably not terribly well, but broke out my Weissenborn book. Uh, Brett, is he making a an octo contra bass or a contra alto? I'm just playing out of the Weissenborn book. That's a, a funeral march. It's actually written as a duet. I'm just looking for things that are easily sight readable. Well, uh, Micah, I absolutely encourage you to make your own octo contrabass clarinet. Uh, I agree with what Blue Lion says. It's There's a reason custom woodwinds are much less common than custom brass. They are a lot more difficult uh, to make, but that's a reason. That's not a reason not to do it. That's a reason to make sure you do your homework before you do it. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Oh, well, this is going to be some fun sight reading. This is going to be another March. Uh, let me get a drone going on. Okay, G minor. 
more time working on the lower octave well no no I'm just gonna play it slower playing the contrabass sarusophone for one hour and six minutes other than uh other than like 20 minutes yesterday but that was in the middle of like a literally i was driving for 21 hours to pick this up and get back in one day um so i was a little loopy yesterday but yeah this is this is the this is my first serious contrabass sarusophone attempt so if you hear some some terrible notes uh that's why well and i'm kind of convinced that the uh the octave f is just bad on the, these on this particular instrument now it does have a a weird key ah darn it stop it does have a a weird key so if we go to the right hand we have our kind of our normal saxophone keys, right? One, two, three, then the low key, and then the kind of the chromatic key. If this were saxophone, you'd be thinking C and D sharp. Uh, I'm thinking E flat, F sharp. Uh, we also have the, the side B flat key and the side C key. So, so like on saxophone, uh, you usually wouldn't want to play this, because it's it's very difficult to get rid of the all of the the extra gap in there you know uh 
you can work really hard, but it's still going to be a little bit there. So a lot of times you would use this key. But it also has this little weird key here which is kind of analogous to the saxophone's palm D key. Uh, Aiden, uh, I don't, I th uh, as far as purchasing one, I think you're uh, eBay. They come on eBay every once in a while, and they're like, I think Brett was saying they're about $5,000. Uh, there's not a lot of companies that make them anymore. I think there's one... Uh, is Orsi still custom manufacturing sarusophones if you happen to have like $20,000 lying around? Uh, other than that, I, I don't, you can't really, it's very difficult to get new ones. Oh yeah, there you go. Apple Shine will make one for $20,000. Um, and Logan, today I am using uh, Contraforte reeds, although I do have some, um, um, Modif or some contraforte cane that I've modified for sarusophone dimensions uh, in the process. Oh, oh Orsi stopped. So, um, but yeah, this this kind of palm D key here. Only it's not for the palm. It's in this very awkward position here. So I'm guessing that's like a trill key. that dual man. Uh, I appreciate it. Man, if this key is that, if this, this is that out of tune, it's almost more of a F sharp than an F natural. I'm struggling to figure out what it's useful for. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it does list it as an alt alternate for D. So that's the only thing I can think of that it would be useful for. Okay. Yeah, but I can't see anything wrong with it mechanically. Like, I mean, it's, it's opening up the, the hole. Um, so it looks like it's just the holes in the wrong spot, uh, to do what it's supposed to do. Uh, I don't know. I really don't. need to get a harness for this. I've never really used a harness before on bassoon. I don't really find it necessary, even though I'm one of those crazy people that uses a neck strap on bassoon full time. But this, and it's not even that terribly heavy. I mean, it's metal, but it's also that the wall is very thin. But okay. Oh, this will be a this will be a terrible sight reading challenge. Yeah. Um, if you all play bassoon, you're probably familiar with this little ditty, the um, Allegro Furioso from Bisonborn. Uh, there's there's nothing nothing to strap into at the bottom. There's no spike. There's no. I mean, you could make something maybe that kind of wraps around and does that, but it it's it doesn't make it easy for you. 
Okay, so this is in B minor. So get a drone going. Dun, dun. Speed it up a little bit. agree that I'm taking it way too slow. Uh, but uh, like I was saying before, I want to make really certain that I'm internalizing using the octave keys in the right spot. Um, and at least on the first few days, that's going to mean taking it very slowly. Um, it's really difficult to relearn something like that if, that if you take shortcuts in the very beginning, or at least for me it is. Thank you. 
jokes about a uh, sarusophone versus like saxophone is, and Brett, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong because I haven't played saxophone in a while, but I'm 90% certain that on saxophone, if you were to play F sharp with the G sharp key down, um, uh, F sharp would come out. It would know the, the instrument has mechanism to close the G sharp tone hole, even though the G sharp key is down. Um, but uh, saxophone doesn't have that. So if you want to go from G sharp to F sharp, thinking about it in saxophone fingerings or B natural to A for me, you have to actually let go of the G sharp key. I've only played contraforte a little bit. Uh, I I play contrabassoon. I like contrabassoon more. I pref personally I prefer the tone of a well played contrabassoon to that of a well played contraforte. But I think uh, generally people overemphasize the differences between the two. Like I think most most of the time when people talk about um, contraforte being so much better they're comparing good contraforte players to bad contrabassoon players um and i think comparing good contraforte players to good contrabassoon players there's much less much less different or much less difference than people make it out to be yeah yeah brett i, I yeah they they're what early saxophones don't necessarily have that Although I need to check if mine does. I have a really old alto sax from like 1918 or something. I believe it does have articulated G sharp. So it might have came before that, but don't hold me to that because I don't play that thing very often. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you may you may be right. It's it's been a while. One thing uh, one thing about my saxophone is it does have that. Uh, some of the old saxophones had the ability had a special tone hole that allowed you to play D sharp by lifting up this um, um, right hand too, um, which modern saxophones don't have, which made it really easy uh, to do certain transitions. So, for example, if you wanted to go from, um, um, oh, what's a good example? Oh, anyway, it was just one extra fingering for D sharp, but uh, modern sax modern saxophones don't have that, and this one definitely doesn't have that. It also doesn't have uh, on saxophone. You would have a uh, uh, an F sharp key here. So if you needed to go from uh, F natural to F sharp really quickly, you could just do that. Whereas on Sarusophone, you just have to do that. Oh, yeah, there we go. C minor arpeggio. Great example. That way you, you wouldn't have to slide the pinky. extra vent on the old saxophones you could play. Only have it actually sound like an arpeggio instead of whatever that was. Okay. Um, so, after goofing around with it a little while, I think what I still need is to work on the transitions on the octave key, so in that second octave. Uh, let's see, where's a good example? Something mostly scalar. Ah, there we go. Uh, the other sarusophones are uncommon to the point where when you say sarusophone, you're usually talking about the contrabass. Um, especially in the United States, the contrabass was the only sarusophone that really caught on. Um, Actually, I, I, Brett can answer that better than I can. But 
long story short, contrabass is by far the most common size of sarusophone. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some more vice and born. Uh, this is a more scalar example, less jumping around, so hopefully I'll have less opportunity to mess up the octave keys. Oh, okay. And this is leaking water on me somewhere. I don't know where it's coming from, but oh well. It's also unplated brass, so my my hands are getting dirty. And, and you never th and you and people say musicians don't get their hands dirty. not drop it. That would be a tragedy. F. Oh yeah, I keep on forgetting that thing's actually there. It does have a water vent down here, and I almost pressed it open even though I'm sure that would have just spilled all on my pants. So let's Unfortunately, it's not in a position that lets you actually use it as a vent, a harmonic vent. Not that it would be useful, but actually, what does that do? Uh, the, on the sousaphone, the vent is too, uh, the water key is too small relative to the bore. It doesn't actually. I mean, it, it changes the pitch but it feels kind of mushy, um, you know, uh, instead of uh, like too discreet. Uh, it doesn't feel like the air column is really coming to terms with that tone hole in the way that it would need to if it were to actually use it as a tone hole. Okay. I buy a euphonium stand.
Okay, well, for what may be the one of the, the very first Sarusophone live stream, I hope this was at least somewhat interesting for some of you. Um, if you have any more final questions about the Sarusophone, uh, go ahead and ask them now. I'm probably going to end the stream here in about, or here pretty quickly. So get your final questions in. So um, it has, like the saxophone, uh, it goes down to low B flat. Now it sounds a low D flat. So the lowest note on this instrument is the same as the low D flat on the contrabassoon. Now, luckily, uh, pieces that were written for sarusophone a lot of times don't use those lowest few notes, but sometimes they do. I do want, of course, since it's me, and I enjoy being a parody of myself. I do want to make a low C extension for the Sarusophone. Um, but um, yeah, so it goes down to low B flat. The big difference being that the low B flat key is for the thumb, kind of like a low A key on a berry sax. Uh, the upper range, I I have not been playing enough to really know. Uh, this fingering chart goes up to the high B natural. So if I start here. Then up to the F. Yeah. yeah, I haven't really played many of these fingerings. So the, the B flat's not too hard. chart that's a C or according to my tuner that's a C so sounds a little wonky so um, if you really spent the time at it you could I'm sure you could have a high range equal to a standard like textbook contrabassoon range um, I think the semi safe range on contrabassoon is up to the, the high C sharp Semi-safe for professional players. Unfortunately, uh, professional contrabassoonists aren't that common. Um, the, but the low range is more limited. Um, the weight, how does that compare? I don't know. I'd have to get a scale, but the contrabassoon definitely feels heavier to me. Uh, but the contrabassoon rests on the ground. This rests on my back. Uh, so it definitely feels heavier. I've played Barry Sax regularly uh, back when I had an 18 year old back instead of a 34 year old back. Thank you. 
Okay, well, I hope this was, like I said, I hope this was interesting, uh, and I will see you all later. I, I do promise that I have uh, um, subcontribution stuff in the pipeline. You know, it's just when you're building everything and doing the and doing the the filming and media and all that, it, it's just it's really easy to get behind. Uh, but but uh, once again, it is something I'm working on, even while I'm also goofing around with things like this. Have a great day.